Hello, I'm Jessica Rivera with your latest news break in Utah. A nine-year-old girl and her four-year-old sister are lucky to be alive after a head-on collision with a semi-truck. The sisters thought they could drive to California to swim in the ocean and had made it several miles before the crash. In California, a 56-year-old man is dead after falling in the Sequoia National Park. The man was with a group of climbers when he lost his footing and fell 500 feet. And in New York City, a Vietnam veteran memorial was desecrated with profanity and swastikas. According to officials, there is a $1,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest or the conviction of the person or persons responsible for the vandalism. And that's your latest news break. Now back to America's Voice Live. Thank you, Jessica. Last week, President Joe Biden announced a U.S. intelligence investigation into exactly where COVID-19 originated. And now, what was once called a conspiracy is finally being taken somewhat seriously by the mainstream media. But emails reveal that Dr. Fauci, he was actually warned COVID may have been engineered early on in the pandemic. He might have even had knowledge that we didn't know about. Joining our panel to talk more about this story is the president of New York Young Republicans Club, Gavin Wax, CEO of Concerned Women for America, Penny Nance, and the CEO and founder of the Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Welcome everyone to the show. I want to show you this email. It was sent from U.S. virus researcher Christian Anderson to Dr. Fauci on July or January 31st, 2020. It says, now remember, this is January. It says, the unusual features of of the virus make up a really small part of the genome, less than 1%. So one has to look really closely at all the sequences to see that some of the features potentially look engineered. This email comes the same month the first case of coronavirus was confirmed in the United States. Gavin, when you see that, you've seen what's happened in the past year. People have been told, kicked off Facebook, told they can't talk about this. You can't talk about this on any social media platform. This was all a conspiracy made up by President Donald Trump. In fact, President Donald Trump was being told this behind the scenes from Dr. Fauci himself. Gavin, what's your take on this? Well, it just goes to show that the truth eventually comes out. I'm grateful we're starting to finally see confirmation of what many people already knew. I think what's uh, the most uh, particu- uh, peculiar about this whole situation was that Fauci, uh, in his uh, position as director of uh, the National Institutes of Health, uh, was funding the gain of function research at this lab where this virus was potentially engineered and then potentially leaked. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest stories of the day. I mean, I think everyone was pretty much under the assumption already that it was from Wuhan, it was engineered, but the fact that our own government, in particular Fauci, was the one cutting the checks to help fund this research for whatever reason, uh, just goes to show what a despicable individual he is and all his lying and deceit uh, finally coming out into the public square is a good thing and hopefully uh, he, he suffers the consequences of these actions. Yeah, when you look at all the American lives lost, you can very clearly see why he doesn't want anybody looking at whether or not this was funded by NIH, whether or not this came out of the Wuhan lab. Melissa, I want to go to you. I want to piggyback off of something Gavin was saying. He knew about this. He knew there were these gain of function studies being done. He's also the highest paid man in the U.S. government, but the U.S. was totally unprepared for a pandemic. He knew they were testing to make this into what could be a bioweapon, but we didn't have ventilators, we didn't have masks, we weren't prepared to fight back against this in any way whatsoever. What do you think about that? Well, it's interesting because uh, rewind back at March of 2020, Fauci really was like the hero. He was the face of COVID. We were watching him on television every single night uh, with President Trump giving speeches, everyone was listening to him. He had a a really good positive approach to this, according to the American people, for about the first two weeks to the first month. And as things continued along and Fauci changed his story, wear masks, don't wear masks, stay home, go out, 
and the economy continued to get worse, then people started to get suspicious about really what was going on and what people were looking to do. And I think what the, the terrible thing about this is that people were really looking to him for advice on what to do as Americans. And when you look at also some of the other emails where he was emailing back and forth with the Chinese doctors, you say, wait a minute, you know, was he was he trying to help Americans or were they trying to help cover up the virus with China? Whose side was Fauci on? And, and I think that is one of the most upsetting things about this as an American, because we were looking to him for advice. Again, as you said, he's one of the highest paid people in the government. He was supposed to be looking out for the country and he was supposed to be looking out for us. And when you wherever it came from, as far as the preparedness of it, I really personally, I think I don't think it's a good idea to be manufacturing uh, these uh, these types of viruses for weapons. I don't I don't I'm not really someone that's pro for doing that. The fact is they do do it. They've been doing it for years. Senator Rand Paul, uh, Rand Paul was grilling him about that. Now he's calling for Fauci to be fired. I don't think that's going to happen either. But I think at the end of the day, when you look at it, you say, wait a minute, is there really any reason for us to be doing this kind of research? Look at what happened. Accidents can happen. I don't know if it escaped from the lab by accident, or I don't know if it escaped from the lab as, as a pre-planned thing. And either way, it was a negative situation that happened. And I think it would have been difficult for any of us to prepare for it because the way that it hit so fast, so quick, we didn't shut down travel soon enough. And obviously, when you see the emails, they knew it was a bigger problem than they really ended up telling us going back even at the end of 20, 2019. Yeah, Penny, you look back at the emails and you see that pretty much what Dr. Fauci was finding out was being told to President Trump. So a lot of these things that President Trump came out and said, hey, this virus is going to disappear. It's going to go away. We can see this in these emails. Dr. Fauci is getting emails. He's saying this virus is going to be, it's not going to be that bad. It's going to go away. But the president was criticized for his reaction to COVID. In fact, Many people say that President Trump lost the election because of the way the mainstream media attacked his approach to COVID. But in fact, we are now reading these emails and it all goes back to Dr. Anthony Fauci. What do you say about that? Oh, there's so much to say. Good points made, um, you know, certainly here today. Two really key issues. First is because of everything that's already been said, the public has lost trust in our, our public health establishment. And that is a very dangerous problem. The Biden administration needs to think through their next steps. If they're smart, they will cut ties with Anthony Fauci and do what Rand Paul said, which is fire Fauci and, uh, and move forward and try to rebuild their public image. Also in that uh, trove of emails was the fact that Francis Collins, the head of NIH, who prior to this, I've had a very high opinion of, was using Mediate, which is a left wing, far left wing, not even news source, opinion source, as his source of information that he's sharing with Dr. Fauci. Yes, you're right. Donald Trump often is, you know, the news was like, Trump said this, this is crazy. And even sometimes we're like, why is he saying that? And often he ends up being right because he had information that the rest of us did not know. Um, Anthony Fauci loves the attention. I, I truly believe he has been so politicized and politicized this important issue that he absolutely has to go and perhaps others as well. The second thing is that I think is a major takeaway and I really hope that the media learns this and they should know this instinctively because of what they do. But shutting down the first amendment is a net loss for America. We were not even allowed to have this discussion. Twitter shut down the Chinese virologist who had a differing opinion, who said this was from a lab. This was leaked from a lab. No, they said it was from a wet market. This can't be true. It's racist. How dare you say that? You can't call it a Chinese virus, even though now we say the Indian variant and we talk about other variants. But no, we can't say that. It is just nonsensical. The way this whole issue has been politicized, big tech, tech should be embarrassed and ashamed of the way they have treated public discourse. It is abominable, and I hope that we all learn a lesson from this, but we have the public health establishment 
has a lot of rebuilding to do and apologizing to do, frankly. And it'll be interesting to watch what goes on. I want to move on to our next topic. According to Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, ransomware attacks cost victims a total of $350 million in 2020. And that number has the potential to go up in 2021. We all know that we have this meat producer, JBS Foods. They've just been a victim of the ransomware attack. But before that, we had the Colonial Pipeline. This has been shutting down various sectors of what we need here in the United States. Experts say the rise of cryptocurrency and easy access to hacking tools are to blame. Gavin, I don't think we even have scratched the surface of this. I will tell you that a local company here in my hometown called me last week and they said we got hit by this dark dark side random or hack ransomware attack. We were attacked and and they had to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to get their systems back online. This is a small local company. Gavin, how far and wide do you think this problem is? Oh, it's massive. Uh, some is state sponsored. Some is just your run of the mill, you know, online dark web criminals. But what's most concerning is when it happened to the Colonial Pipeline, for instance, uh, we just we just paid the ransom. Uh, we're just basically incentivizing more of this to happen. And and I have to ask, where are our intelligence agencies? Where is the FBI? Where is the CIA? Where are all these well-funded uh, intelligence services that we, the taxpayers, foot the bill for, this is what they're supposed to be fighting against. They're supposed to be fighting against these types of cyber attacks, against our infrastructure, against our economic interests, against our, our national security apparatus. Where are they? Oh, they're too busy focused on uh, targeting trespassers from January 6th to worry about actual threats to our uh, national security in the form of cyber warfare. Uh, so the Russians, the Chinese, these different state actors, they're all running circles around us while while our own intelligence service is too busy, uh, you know, looking for the uh, random trespasser uh, back in January. Instead, they should be focusing on protecting our pipelines, protecting our critical infrastructure. I mean, huge parts of the southern United States that were out of gas. They, they, there was a massive gas shortage. This had a massive impact on our entire nation. And you just cited an example of small businesses suffering under this. I mean, we need uh, a serious national cohesive strategy to fight back against cyber attacks and all these types of uh, basically cyber terrorism. And we seem to have nothing so far. Uh, it's a shame. It's it's unfortunate, but it's just part of the course for the Biden administration, this rudderless administration with no direction and no initiative. Well, Penny, it's, it sounds like this has been going on for quite some, some time, and we've had many of our businesses that have been hacked that we don't even know about. It goes back years, but if we go back years, like to what Gavin was saying, we had a lot of people in national security positions who were looking for Russians who were messing with our election, a total hoax that was never that never came to pass. Are we spending our resources on national security? Are, are they being distracted by something unnecessary? And now we've got this problem that we can't seem to combat. Well, that's certainly true. I mean, during the Trump administration, there were um, lots of chasing of, you know, red herrings going on when there needed to be a real focus on this. Yes, this has been going on, not just with businesses and public works, but even hospitals. So I think this is a, a real threat. And, you know, why would they not do it? It doesn't appear that there's, I mean, of course, we don't know what's happening behind the scenes with our intelligence agency. Let's ad ad agencies, let's admit that. We don't know if there's efforts going on um, that's not in full view of the public. I assume that there are. But publicly, public facing, it doesn't appear that there's any downside for being a hacker and doing ransomware. So, uh, you know, the Biden administration is getting owned on this. It is a threat. And frankly, I think people who are invested in cryptocurrency should be concerned about it. It has the potential to delegitimize uh, that type of um, investment. Uh, I think they should be worried if it's when it's used for bad actors and it is used in this case, it is a real problem. So this has far ranging consequences. I hope that it's being thought through, dealt with, and I hope there are things happening that I that we don't know about, but it but it does it certainly should be a worry. It's very worrisome. Melissa, let's quickly talk about cryptocurrency. How dangerous is this for cryptocurrency? We've had a lot of people say they want to switch over to cryptocurrency completely. How much does this damage that idea? 
cryptocurrencies are here to stay. However, I disagree with people that think that they're going to become mainstream where we're going to not have a cash or monetary system anymore. I don't believe that that's going to be the case. And here's why. Because it cannot be controlled by banks. Financial institutions want to control the money. They will always want to control the, the method of payment. And specifically with cryptocurrency, it cannot be tracked or controlled. For example, when you go and you even transfer money, it doesn't happen automatically. There's a 24 window, 24 hour window. And when you ACH, even a payment, some days at times there's a five day window. Again, banks hold that money and are to have that money on deposit during that time when they're playing the float. So as far as damaging the reputation, I think it's going to continue. And I think the problem is that as long as these ransoms continue to get paid, it is going to continue mm -hmm. to happen. We just had this discussion two weeks ago about the oil pipeline. Now we're having it about meat production. We're going to have this discussion again. This will not be the last discussion. And as the previous guest said, as far as losing uh, the public trust in the public health care system, the public has lost trust in the national intelligence agencies. I mean, how do you get that back? Look at what's happened for the last few years. Just really quickly talking about Trump. Trump said they were spying on him. No one believed it. This is before mm -hmm. the election back umpteen years ago. And then he won. And then it came out that he was right. Then he talked about it and said the things about the about COVID. And now it turns out he was right about that. <laughs> so, I mean, you got to give the guy credit for saying things. Mm -hmm. Um, that are true and then being criticized for it and still taking the bashing and continuing to say the truth. Well, that's definitely all very interesting as we watch this come out, what the behind the scenes really was and exactly how transparent our administration used to be as compared to today. Thank you, panel, so much for lending your voice to America's Voice Live today. And up next, it's your voice on America's Voice Live, so don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm.